Where stops? You'll be happy to know we're leaving the camels behind and walking from here on. Well, if you thought getting on the camel was tough, getting down off of it? You're downright embarrassing. And you stop laughing. <laughs> For thousands of years, travelers have walked through here anticipating their first glimpse of the wonders of this ancient city. And you would come all the way through the gorge here, and every time you turn, you'd think it was happening, and then all of a sudden, you come right here, and there it this is. This is what you got. Amazing. It always takes your breath away. I mean, look at this amazing sight. Um, and it, it just uh, fills you with awe of how the civilization over thousands of years ago managed to be able to do something such as... Well, the engineering to be able to carve this into solid rock. Amazing. This is a, a temple for an old Nebuchadnezzar king, an old tomb. But they call it the treasury building. They do call it the treasury because over 100, 150 years ago, there were rumors that uh, a lot of jewelry and gold uh, was left in the big urns that were up on the top there. So people used to shoot at it. And that's, I see the bullet yeah, holes up you there. You see the bullet holes. But uh, no treasury came no, down. No, <laughs> and no treasure. treasure either. No treasure. But Hollywood found gold here. You might remember that the Indiana Jones film, uh, The Last Crusade, starring Harrison Ford and Sean Connery, it was shot here. And in that film, the treasury was the temple that possessed the Holy Grail. Yeah, I remember it well, actually, uh, too well. Now, I'm not so sure I want to go in there. I mean, the place collapsed on them, didn't it? <laughs> yes, but I will personally assure your safety while we're inside. Wow, look at that. Look at the ceiling. Yeah, and you can see the, the huge crack of one of the major earthquakes. That, that is a huge crack. Really, it was part of the downfall of the Nebuchadnezzar civilization. Once you get inside, it's a whole different experience entirely, isn't it? Yeah, the acoustics are absolutely amazing. Your Majesty, you're right, the acoustics are incredible. It is simply amazing. I mean, the, the sounds just resonate off the walls here, and, and you can almost imagine the sounds of ancient travelers. It has such a hauntingly beautiful sound. At the height of its greatness uh, before the time of Christ, approximately 30,000 people lived in Petra, people known as the Nabataeans, living in the middle of the desert. They were incredible architects, as you'll soon see. They had little water, so the Nabataeans cut these aqueducts into the stone and funneled the rainwater into fountains and baths and indoor reservoirs. Petra became a classical oasis, a regular stop on the trade routes, and the Nabataeans grew very, very wealthy. And as their wealth grew, so did their vision for Petra. So they built these giant tombs for their kings as lasting tributes to the greatness of their civilization. It was a very sophisticated culture, wasn't it? Yeah, it really was. They even had live theater. Uh, entertainers would perform for thousands of people in this ancient amphitheater. Petra was so splendid, in fact, that the Romans took it for themselves, and later the Byzantines. But somewhere around 800 AD, the trade route shifted, and it wasn't long before Petra was all but forgotten. It became nothing more than an ornate home for Bedouin shepherds, and over time was mostly covered up by blowing sand. As a result, Petra was lost from maps for a thousand years. In 1812, a Swiss explorer disguised as an Arab rediscovered Petra, and the outside world has become enamored with this place ever since. Today, Petra has been recognized by the United Nations as a World Heritage Site. And in the last decade, millions of foreign visitors have seen its splendors with their own eyes. And Peter, while we're here, I want you to see one of Jordan's holy shrines, the tomb of the prophet Aaron. But I've got to warn you, it's a three-hour hike straight uphill. We made an unscheduled stop along the way. 
an isolated police command post where the officers invited us in for tea. <laughs> When you have those rare moments like today, when you can come up here and enjoy the hospitality and climb up to the top of Aaron's tomb, what goes through your mind? It's just great. It used to remind me of how my life was uh, before the changes um, and be able to just get away from all the officialness and all the uh, protocol and just be able to sit with, with people and friends and just talk about the weather and about jobs and families. Um, it reminds you of, of, of what you need to be able to do, and it just gets you back in touch with the people. It puts it in perspective. Very much so, yeah. A three-hour climb? That's right. Great. Whatever happened to that cool helicopter of yours? <laughs> Come on, Peter. You know you need the exercise. Your Majesty, are we there yet? Almost there. Still got a ways to go. That's what we're aiming for. Oh, boy. Okay. Oh, thanks a lot. Your Majesty, how many steps to the top? 226. And what step are we on now? 29. Why are you laughing? Stop that laughing. Almost there. Still got a ways to go. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's what you said a mile ago. Majesty, what is that? Sounds like. Uh, that's a verse from the Holy Quran, and it says, In the name of God, most gracious, most merciful. Huh. We made it. Now, Your Majesty, what is the significance of this tomb? Well, this is uh, the Prophet Aaron's tomb, uh, Moses' brother, and it's revered by Muslims, Christians, and, and Jews alike. And the most important thing about Jordan, really, it, was, it is the only place where the prophets Moses, uh, Jesus, uh, and Muhammad uh, came at one point or another through Jordan. Wow. And now we made it. All the way, right? This is only halfway. What are you talking about? We still have to get down. Why are you laughing? <laughs> Flying helicopters allows me to forget all the problems. I forget all the problems of state and of the problems that, uh, that we're facing and just relax and cleanse my mind and it's very therapeutic. Peter, on this leg of the journey, we'll head south from Petra. I want to show you my family's favorite getaway spot in all of Jordan. It has an altogether different look from all the other places you've already seen. Hey, I'm up for anything as long as I don't have to ride another camel. Not unless your camel can swim, because I'm taking you to Aqaba, on the Red Sea. It used to be an old Turkish and later a British army outpost. It's only been in recent years that Aqaba has started to be developed as a true resort destination. And to make it more attractive, we turn the entire area into a duty-free zone. Your Majesty, what's always amazed me about this place is how short the distances are between the countries. That's right. From right here, it's a short walk to Israel, which is right over there. And we can see Egypt and Saudi Arabia. Jordan is right behind us. 
Aqaba has miles of accessible beaches.